Welcome to a new video. Today we will talk about another field experience. It was a machine which is making those cap. It's aluminum cap, so it's a wash down machine. Everything was fine. And when I went there, they told me that they have a problem with the PLC. The PLC is Automation Direct 2005 series. And as you can see, the relay output has a fuse, a fuse inside the card which should protect your circuit. Looking into the card itself, there is a fuse on a small base. The fuse wasn't there. There was no fuse, there was no base, there is even the copper on the PCB is burned completely. It was melted down, the card itself had been melted down. So obviously there was a huge current went through the card itself. So if we back a little bit and see if you have some small machinery shop or machine or any uh, workshop, how you will feed your machines there. You will feed from your main panel into the first one and then from the first one to the second to the third. Or you have one cable for each one of those machines and a separate circuit breaker. And of course, each one of the machines will have its own on-off or circuit breaker or a switch. What's happened in this small manufacturing facility is they have one cable goes from the main feed to a junction box. And then from the junction box, you have feed to each machine. So you have one switch in each machine and main circuit breaker. In any machine you can find a control circuit which is controls your motors. It's 110 or 220 AC which controls your or 24 volts to control your motor and operation. You have one L1 and N, one phase and the neutral you do all your control with this method. For some reason, the guy who designed this machine has the idea to distribute the load on the two phase. Even if it's a tiny control system inside and a control circuit, a couple of lamps, a couple of relays, so it's not a big deal, but he wanted to distribute those consumption on L1 and L2. This is a schematic, which is if you look at it, L1, couple of lamps, relays, contactors, with neutral, L2 with neutral. But if you look closer to the this uh, circuit or schematic, this is what you have really, is L1 to N and N to L2, because N exactly the same in both circuits. So now you have 220 between the neutral and L1, or 110, and between L1 and L2 is 380 or 2, or 204 in AC. In our case, in this plant, because running 220, that's between L1 and L2, is 380 volt AC. Now let's look if you have one lamp, five watts between L1 and N, and 100 watt between L2 and N. Everybody is happy. This is five watts glowing, 100 watt is glowing more, but everything is fine. The operator on this machine told me something very funny. He said if he left this switch slowly, then the lamps will glow stronger. If he left it quickly, it will not. To me, at the beginning, it was funny because switch is switch. Either it is on or off. But let's look at what's happened if actually this is the case. You have a 5 watt and a 100 watt, and you have resistance in this higher, much higher than this guy. So assume that's related to the watts. That means this resistance is 20 times this much of this resistance. Like this guy is 20 times more than this. That means that the 380 will be distributed between both of them if you remove the end based on the resistance. You have 380 volt AC now distributed between the 5 watts and the 100 watts. 
So in fact, based on the resistance, you will find about 360 volt AC on the 5 watts, and you have 18 volt AC on the 100 watts. Of course, this is just kind of a very quick, rough estimation. So what happened now is his switch, when he connected them, he connect the phases before the ground. So if you do this, and another problem he has is in the junction box, the cable feeding his cap, this machine, has the neutral was not properly connected. So he has always L1 and L2 and L3 connected, but the neutral is not, the ground is not connected properly to the machine. So in some cases, what happens is that he loses the neutral and the phase one and phase two is feeding some kind of equipment. Whatever those equipment are, he's feeding them in series. And that is what happened actually, and what is blown your fuse and destroyed our PLC. So in this case, what is the lesson learned from this experience? First thing is there are some kind of recommendation from PLC companies, from DCS companies, from the uh, your jurisdiction in connecting your uh, wiring inside a cabinet or inside a house. So you must follow and see them. Don't forget that the codes are different in Europe than in the States, maybe in Japan or in other places, they are different. For instance, if you look at the PLC in Europe, they ask you to connect the AC and the instrument and the power supply. In the US, may not. Some companies, they insisted that you have in your PLC or DCS cabinet three type of grounds. One is for the instrument and instrument cable shields, and one for the ground, the AC ground, and one for your analog signals. And they are not connected inside your cabinet. You should connect them in your ground well. Some other companies or places, they recommend that you connect them. So you have to follow what their recommendation. The second issue is that if you can, if you want to distribute your uh, power consumption on the three phase, use a transformer instead of using uh, one hot and second and, and so on. So that would give you a good place to start. Or just simply use one phase and the neutral and make all your circuit on one phase. Make sure that your body is grounded. And in some places, we have actually ground all the machinery together to a separate uh, grounding. We call it the machines or the, uh, and also we connect it to the motors body, to the uh, structure body, and so on. So if you have re experience with this kind of connections and problems, please share it with other people and let's share our experience to help each other. Thank you and see you in the uh, next new video.